Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So today we explore another fantastic Humorex Pepperball launcher. And guys, I only have one thing to say about this one. Guy, computer guy. Here we go. All right, guys, I had to. I had to. I had to. Today, we are taking a look at the Humorex Walther PPQ. And I know, I know that James Bond used the Walther PPK, but you know what? It's close enough to be awesome. So I definitely wanted to throw that one in there for you. And just like the Smith & Wesson, the Humorex uh, Walther PPQ actually offers a couple different models. Now, let me show you what we've got going here. And let's see if we can get Stumpy focused in. So this check that out guys that is gorgeous man talk about the camo desert you gotta love it so they offered this in this model and they also offered in the standard black model and as you can see guys these are absolutely gorgeous walther just has a look guys and i want to pull one of these out and show you here get up here on stumpy Walther just has a look and a feel to it. And I mean, you can you can see by the, the way that the handle is contoured, how it grabs your hand. And it's a smaller form factor than almost every other one of the Humorex Pepperball launchers. And to kind of give you some context, this is the Walther. And this, as you can see, look at the difference. It's a much larger weapon. This is the TPM-1 that I currently carry. So... It's got a smaller form factor, which makes this ideal for concealed carry, especially for women, if they've got it in a purse or something else where it's smaller. I like that. That's a very good function, and my wife loves this weapon. It's the one she actually carries. So let's see what we get in the box here. So just like the other ones, it looks like you get a the replacement spring. Now, one thing I am not seeing, now that is an Allen key, guys, but I have no idea what that fits because there's one in this one but not in this one, and that is not the size for changing the uh, CO2 cartridge in the magazine, so I'm not real sure about that one. Uh, you do get a the cleaning, uh, whatever you call that, squeegee, I guess we'll call it, for the barrel, and that's all you get. Now, one thing I am noticing, and I will do some research on this, guys, I do not see the, uh, uh, let's see if i got one right over here, yes, the Allen key, that you use to change out the CO2 cartridges in these. All right, guys, so after doing a little more digging, I found where the Allen key is. They actually are included. Now, this will also go back to the Smith & Wesson video because I did not realize this. Some of these with the interchangeable back straps, the back of this can actually be changed. Guys, watch this. Drop the magazine, right? Grab the back from the base and pull. The entire back strap pops off like so. And it is tight, guys. It's not something that's just going to come flying off on you. But you wouldn't want it to come flying off on you. So check this out. There's the back strap. And guys, there's the Allen key. That is the key that you use to adjust your cartridge. Okay, that is really, really cool. That means that there are probably adjustable back straps for this weapon, although I haven't found any other one yet. So, But yeah, to put it back in, it simply slides in like this and snap it into place. That is awesome, guys. I love it. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, guys, so just like the uh, every other Humorex weapon, they load the exact same way. So you drop the magazine down. Your CO2 cartridge goes in here. And you will load up your balls in here. Now, we are going to be firing the same uh, rubber balls. Oh, we got a new target, by the way, guys. You guys are going to get kick out of this. And uh, I'll, I'll show you what I did. I think you're going to like it. So, all right. So, what we're going to do is I want to go ahead and get one of these loaded up. You've seen me load these up before, so I'll save you that. We are using a, a drop of Pell gun oil on here, and these are standard 12-gram cartridges. So, let me get this loaded up, and then we're going to move out here to our range, and we're going to fire it at the new one. Be right back. All right, guys, so as you can see down here, what I've got is that used to be one of those old uh, arcade machines that, you know, that would have the lights on the floor and you would stomp on them. Well, that one was completely destroyed. The electronics were burned up. It had probably a pretty interesting story in itself. Um, when we're done today, I'm going to take you down there and show you something I did to it that you're going to get a kick out of. But 
What we've got up in front of this is we've got our standard cardboard box in the back with the heavy foam on it, and then we've got two of those pieces of that sheet plywood in the front of it to see if we can get penetration on these 43 calibers. Now, we've got this loaded up just like last time, one drop of Pell gun oil up here. We've got our CO2 cartridge loaded here, and in here we are running the uh, uh, solid balls. You guys can actually see that. Those are the rubber steel core riot balls from Umarex. And by the way, I will have links to all of this down in the description, guys, okay? So... We're going to go ahead and pop that in. We're going to charge that weapon, and we are now ready to fire. Now, uh, somebody had asked me about chronoing on the last video we did for the Smith. Um, the next video is going to be a head-to-head -head with all of the 43 calibers, and we're going to chrono each one of them individually because I want to get a nice baseline for all of them. So, And I want it to be fair because, you know, a chrono may hit strange one day, and the next day hits a little weirder. I want them all at the same time so we can see it. So... The next video coming up will be chronoing that. So let me get my eyes on here. And guys, we're not going to go for anything in particular, just trying to keep a nice little pattern somewhere in the middle on this one. And I want to see if it actually punctures. All right, so I'm getting back behind the camera, protection on, and here we go. You know what? Let me see if I can get the, cam the weapon in view. There we go. All right, here we go. Now the trigger pull, guys, feels rear a little bit heavier. Actually... Actually, guys, that trigger pull feels very, very, very nice. Now, um, that was eight rounds downrange, and hopefully you can see that. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me illuminate a little bit. There we go. And as you guys can see, it put a very solid, tight pattern right there. And that went through both of the boards. Yep and into our box back here and our little smiley face we drew on him so that was exactly what i figured it would probably do now what i want to do somebody had asked me the other day about whether they should load these things up with the solid balls or they should keep it loaded with the pepper balls now just to let you see this i'm going to show you this is on my tpm1 and what i do is and I hopefully this will get this picture I alternate. So you can see solid pepper, solid pepper, solid pepper, and then the first round is a pepper ball. Now, by the way, the pepper balls that I'm using on these guys are really nasty. Um, honestly, I, I, I definitely wouldn't want to take a hit. They are way worse than the standard ones you're going to get from Umarex or, or from a, a Burna or any of those guys. Um, if anybody out there is interested in those, let me know in the comments or shoot me an email, and I will put my email in there, and we'll, we'll work some out to get some out to you because they are really nasty. So, all right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this magazine, and we're going to alternate. Now, obviously, we're not. This is the same magazine we just fired. We're obviously not going to be firing the... Um, uh, real, real pepper balls because I don't want to gas myself. But what we're going to do is we're going to alternate solids and we're going to use the, uh, the practice pepper balls. So I'll be right back with you. As you can see, we've got solid, pepper, solid, pepper, solid, pepper, solid, pepper. So all the way up. And the first one is going to be one of the pepper balls. That's the way I keep them loaded. Um, it's cost effective that way, guys, because the pepper balls can get kind of pricey. Obviously, the test ones aren't that bad, but the, the real pepper balls can get kind of pricey. So that's the best way to alternate it. Plus, honestly, your first one's their warning shot, and, and they're not going to get up from that pepper spray. But if they do, the second one's a solid round. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. So, all right, let's put this one in, charge her up, and I'm going to get back behind the camera here. Now, first one should be a pepper ball. We are looking for a rupture on the box. Let me make sure my... Get that in camp. There we go. All right, here we go. And I, I'm in a weird angle, so bear with me if I miss my shot. Wow. Eight, guys, that hits with such velocity that I think that a couple of the pepper balls actually went through the box. We had two of them that ruptured. I can see that. And then, oh, phew, yeah, they ruptured back here. Look at this. It's all over. So they went through the, let's just say clothing, through the clothing and hit the target behind them and ruptured back here. Wow, that's nasty. Okay, that actually worked out real well. Um, just for test purposes, let me turn that sideways. And what I want to do is let's load up 
eight straight pepper balls and let's see if we get some rupture on them that's what we're shooting for all right guys so we're gonna do something fun on this one you're gonna like it we're on the same co2 cartridge okay so this is the third mag we're sending through this and as you can see that is all practice pepper balls all the way up now instead of shooting the cardboard i thought let's shoot something a little a uh, little harder so uh uh oh it looks like scully has made a reappearance so let's take a shot at Scully and see how we can do here. By the way, guys, I'm going to show you why I built this like this in just a second. I really do dig the way this thing is working. So, all right, let's see if Scully can take a shot or two. And hopefully I'm going to keep you in frame here, guys. We are, by the way, before we fire this, I want to show you guys something. 9 to 15, 3 to 5. Remember those numbers, okay? Watch. This is 15 feet. This is the long range, which you would typically be, if, if you ever had an encounter with a firearm, this is the range you would be at. We are way beyond that back here. We are at least, at least 25 to 30 feet when I get back behind that camera. So we are testing these in what I would consider is even an unrealistic situation. You're not going to be that far away, but we want to see if it would work if you were. So, all right. Third magazine, here we go. Okay, Scully, let's see if you stay up this time. Well, I don't know about you guys. It looks like Skelly got dusted. <laughs> Let's go back here and take a look and see what actually happened. <laughs> Every time I do this, guys, it's like walking through a cloud. <laughs> no movie magic, remember? These are pepper balls. These were not the solids. And I want to give you guys an indication of exactly what that means. Okay, those are direct eye shots. I was going for every pore. Cheek, cheek, eye, eye, nose. Those were dead on hits, guys. Now, look, I don't care who you are. And, and look at, the, oh, here, let me check this out. Check this out. I got I to show you this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Scully here is not getting up from this encounter, guys. And, you know, you always get the tough guys out there. Oh, it's not a real gun. Dude, you show me a human being that's going to take that. Anywhere. Anywhere. That is a self-defense weapon. This is, this is what they're made for. This is what they do. And this is your evidence that they are capable of defending you in that situation. So hold on one second here. I'm going to take you down here for a second. In fact, let's walk together. Let's see if I can do this without knocking my camera over. I want to show you what I did down here. So... The way I've got this arranged, this used to have a marquee on it right here. And what I did is I took off the glass marquee, and then I uh, uh, built in a ramp right here. So when I fire balls at it that don't rupture, they hit this and roll down into the coin slot on the bottom, guys. So hopefully you can kind of, I'm going to bend you over and show you. There you go, right there. So this gives you an idea of exactly what it's designed to do. So this is the coin slot right here, and it goes down into that little ramp and then down into that hole and ends up down on the bottom. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I just wanted something where I could uh, save these without having to go hunt them, so it was always challenging. All right, moving back into the office. I'll be right back with you. Guys, once again, the, the proof is in the pudding with these things, and I got to tell you something about this. That felt more powerful than the Smith & Wesson did. I mean, just the, the feel of the shot. And I, and I don't know if that's because we're dealing with a smaller weapon or, or what was causing it, but it, it had a different feel to it. It feels a lot more um, uh, tactile, like a lot more reactive. You can actually feel it firing a lot more. Um, I really like this. In fact, what I may end up doing, all of you guys that have been here have seen me carry the TPM-1 and you've seen me carry the Berna. Guys, I'm going to alternate these. Honestly, I don't have a favorite. I really don't. They all have different uses in different situations, but all of them will get the job done if you are within that magic three to five range. So it, it's fantastic. It really is. Anyway, guys, I'm telling you, guy, computer guy, definitely, right? Seriously. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. The next video with the 43 calibers will be an all together head to head and we will be chronoing all of them. We will be firing at a lot of different things, including another Scully. I'm going to print us a nice fresh one. And then uh, we'll see how they handle it head to head. See which one actually has the most power. If I'm guessing, I'm guessing. Uh, you know what? Let's go on a limb here. 
I'm saying TPM1, I'm saying Walther, and then I'm saying Smith & Wesson as far as velocity and impact. And that is a very bold prediction. So we're all going to get to see it together. Have a great week, guys. Uh, don't miss the podcast on Tuesday and don't miss the gameplay. I got something new for you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.